Hello everyone. In this video, I will discuss about the call by value and call by reference. Okay. Now see by the term only uh, what we understand is call by value. So first of all, what we are calling here. Okay. So call by value means we are calling here our functions. We are talking about the calling of our functions. Okay. And those function if we are calling by value means if we are passing the uh, parameters as your values then those are called your call by value and call by reference means if we are passing the parameters as your addresses then that is called your call by reference okay so by name only you can understand by value and by reference reference means with some address or with some reference so if we are calling our function by passing the parameters as your address then that is called your call by reference and if we are passing uh, the parameters as your values then that is called your call by value okay so basic overview of functions i have already uh, discussed in the previous video okay in the what we have discussed that how we use the functions in your uh, program and what is called your function calling how the actual parameters what are actual parameters what are formal parameters so basically the parameters if you are passing the values in your function then that is called your call by value and if in the function you are passing some addresses to your function as a parameter then that is called your call by reference okay so that we will discuss here uh, in detail in this video okay and that i will discuss by solving one example which is your gate csc 2015 okay so this is your previous year question that we will discuss here with that you will get uh, more clear uh, about uh, this call by value and call by reference and one of your previous year question will also be get solved and whatever the uh, concept you are having in it except that that also you can uh, learn here okay so see here this your program is given here and what you are asked you are asked the output of your above program you have to find the output of your above program so from where you have to start execution of this program from the main function you will start executing your uh, program okay so see here this uh, what we can see in this program again one main function is given to you and two more functions are given here this f1 and f2 function okay so this is the starting of your function ending of your function means this is your one function this is your f2 function this is starting of your function and this is your ending of your function means this uh, function is ending here okay now see what i told you is that call by uh, value means if you are passing the values to your function as a parameter so what you can see here see here in this f1 a comma b you are calling this f1 function here this is your f1 function and you are passing values a and b some a and b values you are passing here that is this is called your call by value and this f2 function again you are passing the here you are not passing the value but you are passing the addresses here so that is called your call by reference okay so here f2 function you are calling here and this is passing the addresses so in the receiving and also see pointer variables are there to receive the addresses okay now see we will discuss here okay so first of all you are calling your main function okay you are calling your main function here so what we have to do we have to execute all the instruction which are present in your main function so 1 2 3 and 4 you have four instruction so if you will uh, uh, you will complete execution of these four five statements five statement then your uh, this main function will be completed means your execu execution of your program is completed fine so see first statement here is int a equals to 4 b equals to 5 c equals to 6 means here this uh, this a is initialized with the value 4 b5 and c6 okay so see, let uh, so here in the memory location okay in the memory location this a is initialized with the value 4 and given it some memory location let us suppose 100 okay then this b at some memory lo location let us suppose 200 initialized with the value 5 and this c is stored let us suppose at some memory location 300 with the value 6 okay so in the first step we have initialized this three variables fine now in the second step this is your first step now in the second step you are calling your f1 a comma b function fine you are calling your function f1 a comma b means a comma b is you are passing the value of a and b so a is your 4 and b is your 5 so this f1 you are passing this value 4 and 5 and calling your f1 function now where is your f1 function f1 function is here now see 4 and 5 are your integer values only int a int b because you are passing your uh, values here so receiving uh, parameters are also your uh, integer variables okay so now you are calling your f1 function here this is your f1 function with the value 4 comma 5 now here this 4 is received by this a variable and b is uh, sorry 5 is received by this b variable okay so here now the a 
has got the value 4 and B has got the value of 5. Okay. Now see here. Okay. Now here also two uh, statements are there. So we have to execute these two statements to complete the execution of this F1 function. Fine. Now see first is your int C. Okay. Now see here one more variable is declared here that is your C. Okay. And uh, now okay now let us suppose that any memory location these are also allocated some memory location let us suppose this is your uh, this was your 300 this is your 400 this is your 500 and let us suppose this is your 600 okay at some memory allocation the these uh, variables will also be allocated at some memory location okay so c is uh, declared here okay now in the second statement so this was your first statement of your f1 this is your second now in the second statement c equals to a so c is initialized with the value of a okay so a is passed to your c so c is now having the value 4 fine now a equals to b now a will store the value of b so b is your 5 so a will store the value 5 fine now third is your b equals to c now in the b you have to pass the value of 4 that is b equals to c means b has become your 4 b equals to c so this c is 4 and uh, it is passed to your b okay now Overall, what we can see what happened here, these two values are basically swapped. A is 4 before and B is 5. Now, A is your 5 and B is your 4. So, basically, this F1 function, what it did, it swapped these two values of A and B. Okay. So, now, in the second statement is also completed. Our values are swapped. Now, this F1 function is completed. Okay. Now, we will return back from where it is called. Now, see here, it is called from this point okay now this point is completed f1 function execution is uh, completed now we will move to the third statement of your main function because it, it is called from the second statement of this now it is completed so it will return back here and now our third statement of your main function will be executed so third is your implementation of your f2 okay so f2 function now you are calling here let us suppose this is your third statement because it is got completed now third statement is your calling of your f2 function and now what is passed here your address of b and c are passed in your f2 function so what is your address of b address of b is your 200 and address of c is your 300 okay now in f2 function the address of b and c are passed now you have to call your f2 function so where is your f2 function f2 function is here now we have to execute this function now see here because addresses are passed here now the receiving variables are also your pointer variable because it has to receive the addresses okay so these are your pointer variables so what will happen here in your f2 function now this f2 function is called here okay now this f2 is called with the value of 200 comma 300 fine now what is what this a is storing the value 200 a is allocated with the value 200 and now what is this b is allocated with the value of your 300 fine okay this a is receiving the value 200 and b is receiving the value 300 okay now these values are given to it okay now the first step is again in c1 variable c is initialized here okay c is initialized here okay now in the this statement second statement what is there c equals to star a now what value c is storing see here what is a okay so a is your 200 200 so now value at 200 star a means value at 200 so this is a 200 now value at 200 is your c 200 is this value at 200 is your is 5 means this c we have to allocate the value 5 because c is having the value at 200 star a means a is your 200 so value at 200 is your value at 200 is your 5 so c will be allocated the value 5 so c is given the value 5 fine now see in the second statement star a equals to star b okay now what is your b so b is your 300 and star b means value at 300 so 300 where is your 300 300 is this and value at 300 is your 6 now this value is assigned to a what is your a a is your 200 and value at 200 so what is the value at 200 value at 200 is your 5 that 5 is replaced with this 6 fine that the 6 will be assigned to this place so uh, a is your 200 and value at 200 is your 5 so now that is replaced with the 6 fine now your third statement star b equals to c okay so what is your c c is your 5 here okay and b star b now what is your b b is your 300 okay so this is your 300 now star b means value at 300 so what is the value at 306 and that you have to replace with this 
fine okay so this step is completed and this is your ending so this your f2 function is completed now okay so what you can see what happened in your this f2 function is these two value of b and c those are swapped okay b was 5 before and c was 6 now b is your 6 and c is your 5 okay now means what happened um, completely in this your f2 function execution these two values are finally swapped okay now okay so this is swapped now again this is completed means again it will this f2 is completed f2 function is completed now again it will return back to the point from where it is called in your main function so in this point it was called now third statement is completed now you have to execute the fourth st statement of your main function so fourth is your percentage d c minus a minus b okay now what is your c now okay this is your main function now this is your okay these all were the uh, these all were the variables inside your f1 function these were inside your f2 function so these have the scopes only in this f1 and f2 function now we are in the main function and now in the main function we have the variables a and b c okay so these variables have the scope in your main function now but we have to write c what is your c value 5 okay so c value is your 5 okay c value is your 5 then c minus a what is your a 4 minus b what is your b 6 okay so this is your 6 so what is the result 5 minus uh, 10 5 minus 10 is your minus 5 fine so what it will print print f percentage d so answer is minus 5 okay so this is completed you have well written from this function so the value is a minus 5 so what is the output of your this program minus 5 okay so the option will be a that is minus 5 okay so in this way we have to solve this question so what we have learned here see this this will be called your call by value because you have called by the value here you have called this function f1 with the values of a and b and this is called your call by reference because you have okay this is called your call by reference because you have called the uh, this f2 function with the addresses of b and c okay so this is basically the difference between call by value and call by reference that in this values part in this addresses part now what is the change here when we have passed the addresses then our in the f2 function when we have passed the addresses then the changes were in our final values okay because here the addresses were passed and when we were um, looking at the value of these so that were directly uh, pointing to the value which are present here okay in this f1 function what happened uh, only the values were passed and we have swapped among the values only okay we have swapped the values here so it has not um, done any change in the in your main variables in the function which are presented in your main function the variables which are presented in your main function but here because the addresses are passed and then we were uh, we were uh, looking at the value present at those addresses okay we were present we were viewing at the value present at those locations so these have directly done the changes in your um, uh, in your variables which are present in your main function okay in our original function they have directly changed okay so this is basically the difference between call by value and call by reference that if you want to change the values at uh, your uh, in the original values if you want to make any changes then if you will call with your address okay and if you uh, don't want to change any uh, if you don't want to make any changes in your uh, original function then you can call by call by value okay so this is the basic difference with your call by value and call by reference it is explained with example i think now you got it okay now see one more example of a simple swap function okay i will uh, put in the description box you solve it and uh, the uh, and then uh, verify your answers okay you uh, comment your answers in the comment section and then verify it whether the answers are correct or not okay so that will be a uh, one more practice for you so uh, then you can be a uh, that you can be thorough with this call by value and call by reference okay so this was all about this video thank you